A very good morning and welcome to ITN News coming to you live from the ITN studios with me, Abra Rabid. Now, before we go into our stories in detail, let's take a look at our headlines. The president instructs officials to expedite the current road development projects. UN permanent representative says that Sri Lanka has come to a path of reconciliation after end of the war. UNP is to take stern action against the members who breached the party's constitution. The army commander says that Wuhan operation to bring the Sri Lankan students back is a diplomatic victory for Sri Lanka. Beijing orders 14-day quarantine for returnees. In our lead story, President Gotabe Rajapaksha instructed the relevant officials to expedite road development projects, including the Central Expressway projects. These instructions were given in a meeting held at the Presidential Secretariat. The President stresses the acceleration of construction of the parts of Central Expressway from Kadavata to Kurunagala, Kurunagala to Damulla, and Potuhara to Galagidara. After completion, Kadavata to Dambulla segment motorists get quick access to northern, eastern and western provinces. An economic corridor between these road systems will also be developed. Construction of the 76-kilometer long road from Ingiria to Ratnapura will also be expedited. UN Permanent Representative to Sri Lanka, Mrs. Shanuka Seneviratna, says that Sri Lanka has come to a milestone of reconciliation period following the three-decade-long brutal separatist war. She made this comment at a meeting held at the UN Security Council. As this august body is aware, Sri Lanka is presently at a juncture of transition after a near three decades of brutal separatist terrorism to an era of reconciliation and sustaining the hard-won peace. Sri Lanka's engagement today is in keeping with the government's vision for a country that embodies the universal values of human rights, justice, rule of law and good governance while ensuring economic dividends to its people. Sri Lanka is one of the oldest democracies in Asia and the newly elected President of Sri Lanka, His Excellency President Gotabe Rajapaksa, in his address to the nation at the 72nd Independence Celebrations, pledged to work towards guaranteeing the human rights and political and economic freedom for the people in a truly democratic country. In this context, he espoused that every citizen of Sri Lanka has the right to live freely and securely, holding independent opinions, following the religion of choice and freedom of association and assembly, as these are rights of human beings that no one can challenge. Sri Lanka is therefore committed to find innovative and pragmatic solutions driven by the domestic context to protect the country's national interest, guided by the provisions of the constitution and the will of the citizens expressed through democratic means. In more news at home, UNP parliamentarian Professor Ashumara Singh has says that the party has decided to take stern action against the members who hold membership and posts in various alliances by breaching the party's constitution. At a media briefing held in Sirikota party headquarters, he said that such parliamentarians may lose their portfolios as well. The crisis over the party's symbol is heightening as Sajid Premadasa's faction is insisting the heart symbol instead of the elephant symbol. Special parliamentary meeting in this connection was held yesterday at the parliament complex. Still in local news, Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavindra Silva says that Wuhan operation to bring the Sri Lankan students back home is a diplomatic victory gained by Sri Lanka. He pointed out that it is mainly due to the President's leadership. Security forces and many parties took great efforts under the guidance of the President to bring the students back to Sri Lanka. The mission was exemplary to the developed countries as well. The group of students were brought to the island in the first of this month and directed to special transition camp in the Atalava army base. After 14 days quarantine period, they were proved free of the virus. The students expressed their gratitude to the president and the security forces for not cornering them to such a tragic situation. They said they had the feeling of reviving their lives after the nightmare. 
In more news at home, President's Media Division said that a National Salaries Commission has been established to provide guidance and assistance to the government in formulating and executing a national salaries policy. The commission has been established by President Gotabe Rajapaksha. The Gazette notification announcing the establishment of this new commission was issued yesterday. The purpose is to appropriately meet the workforce needs of both public and private sectors by reviewing all remuneration structures including salaries and wages in the public and private sectors to maintain the continuous sustainability of earnings. The 15-member commission is headed by Mr. Upali Vijayvira. And that is all the news for today. Do join us again tomorrow for the very latest for the ITN News team. I'm Abrar Abid. Have a great day and take care.